if you haven't noticed, I think I've made it pretty clear. I got a Toby Eye Tracker 5, and uh, I've got some things to say about it. So I got a quick unboxing for you, some impressions, and then let's talk about who I think will benefit from this device. Thanks for coming to this Tomato Talk. So this is the first purpose-built motion tracking device I've ever purchased, outside of kind of being forced to... You ever wonder what the bottom of an Avatar shoe looks like? Well, bam! There it is. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, I bought this device off of a suggestion and I loved it. I decided to reach out to Toby to see if they'd partner up to give an additional device away and they were happy to do so. The winner of that giveaway will be announced at the end of this video. And I'd like to make it clear this review is not affected by Toby. All promotions were negotiated after the fact. Additionally, I've not used competing devices like Track IR, so I can't speak towards that, other than a webcam that I used for some face tracking. All that being said, let's get into it. The device was really well packaged and actually showed up two days after I ordered it, on New Year's Eve. It was supposed to take six days, but Toby apparently is on top of things. The packaging was simple, but pleasing. It's reminiscent of a smartphone in that the eye tracker is front and center when you open it. Not much else in there besides the wiring, the mounting hardware, and the instructions. As for the design of the device, the minimal design, which is nothing more than a black bar and a couple of infrared sensors, could not be more understated. Every person that I showed the software to in real life missed the bar until I pointed it out. This device is not the center of attention. It doesn't want to be seen, and it does its best to avoid that while still essentially sitting in the most prominent spot on the desk. And I really appreciate that. The design itself, including the docking options, which are a single metal strip and a Velcro-capable mount, is overall simple and intuitive when it comes to installation. It's made of machined aluminum, providing a nice quality feel and a sturdy construction. It also has a high field of view, so even when mounted directly to the front of a flat monitor, it won't have trouble seeing your eyes. And you may notice that throughout this video I am in two different locations. Unfortunately, my review got split by a 7,000 mile trip across the world. So I can confirm it does work on both sides of the world. After plugging into a USB 2.0 capable port on your PC, you can head to the website to download the software you want to use and run it to set up the device in probably less than five minutes. At that point, there are three different software options, but they all aren't required. There is the Toby Experience, which helps you visualize your head tracking and allows you to see a nice graphic display of all supported games. Toby Ghost, which will be where you set up your device for streaming, if that's what you do, and Game Hub, similar to that original graphic display we saw, but providing you with the ability to tweak the specific eye tracker settings for each game. I really hope they consolidate all of this into one package in the future, because I really don't enjoy having three different programs on the computer for very slightly different things. There's also a bit of a process to get this set up to use while streaming, as you'll have to account for the delay between your eye movement and the translation of that to stream, while the stream is live. But keep in mind, if you're looking to use this for competitive purposes and gameplay analysis, your setup is complete. It's that easy, you just need to turn the overlay on. The device also allows you to choose which eye you want to track in case of a disability, which I think is a really nice accessibility feature. Now let's talk about what the device offers you and look at it in a couple of applications. The overall functionality of the device is impeccable given the basic functions. What you'll notice while watching these games is that each game has different integrations. They're mostly the same, such as choosing how much head or eye tracking you would like, but there are some subtle differences that you'll see in different titles. For my first game in The Division, I found it a little bit gimmicky with some of the features. I didn't find myself having the patience to use things like throwing or running where I'm looking all that much. But the ability to hide HUD elements while I don't need them, oh that was, that was nice. This feels like one of the most natural, useful applications of eye tracking. 
Also, tagging enemies just by looking at them also feels like cheating, and that's something that I saw in multiple games including Far Cry 5. Snapping to aim in games like Far Cry 5 was also really nice once you got the hang of it. Now my most used application for this is Star Citizen, and I think a lot of people who are looking for this device are playing things like Space Sims or Flight Sims like Elite Dangerous, so let's take a look at that. Elite Dangerous is one of the best games to use for this device, not just due to the setting, but also the amount of control you have in fine-tuning the experience, all the way down to sensitivity curves. This way I was able to set the game to only respond to my eye movement if my head had turned a certain amount. This is a great way to dodge a problem I'll bring up later. Also, with an interactive cockpit, I was able to open menus, identify signals, and do other things that would normally require hands at a time that isn't super convenient. If you play Elite Dangerous and don't want VR, this is definitely your answer. And chances are, if you're watching this, you are at least interested in Star Citizen, as that's what most of this channel revolves around. And I can confirm this can change the game entirely. As with Elite Dangerous, you can look around your cockpit and get eyes on your target while pulling maneuvers. You can also use this while walking around, sitting, using your menus, or driving on the ground. You may not want to, but the option is there. And it always works. And to be honest, with such a detailed environment and range of scale, it begins to feel a little bit like VR. Finally, it still works with games that aren't on the list as well. For instance, I played a lot of Halo 4 with this, and it acts as a great tool for analyzing your gameplay if you really want to improve your play, or for others to be able to see your thought process if the need arises. Overall, the device functions incredibly well, even when switching between different areas, lighting situations, rooms, or PCs. The calibration process is short and simple and it does not seem to stray in performance over time. I've only had a few problems with it tracking my eyes in a specific game, but that's it. And even the little built-in features to improve your Windows experience can be useful in some applications. Now one issue that I did have with this device, which I mentioned earlier while discussing Elite Dangerous, was actually something that won't affect everybody. What I'm talking about is inadvertent eye movement. What I mean by this is the time when you look at your other monitor, or somebody in the room, or really anything off screen. As a streamer, this can become very annoying for your viewers, as anytime I want to communicate with my chat, my view veers off the side of the screen. I don't know how you would get around this, but it is something that comes up, and again, like I said, many people won't notice it. For instance, I put a hotkey on my mouse that allowed me to turn it off very easily when I wanted to look off screen. Cumbersome, but it works for my niche situation. Another very small issue is the non-universal adoption so far, as relatively new technology games are still exploring ways to implement it. Because of that, there isn't really a set and forget setting. Unlike your mouse and keyboard, you'll likely need to dive into the settings of every game to figure out what you can and cannot do, and fine tune the details to your liking. Because of this, I place the eye tracker in a peripheral category above casual. While the device is nothing but convenient, you will have to deal with that small detail. Now let's talk a little more about the various needs that call for a device like this and whether it's the right device for you. Like any piece of tech that we're looking at, I think whether you should buy this or not is very dependent on your own specific application. But I can tell you that there are three groups of people who I think absolutely would benefit from this and should be thinking about getting it if they happen to have the admittedly large amount of cash lying around for it. If you're looking into competitive play or esports, this is a no-brainer, absolutely. Basic functionality works with literally any single game you want to play without any setup needed. And you'll be able to look back at all of your play and understand what you're doing wrong at crucial moments. Those people who are creating content, 
whether that be through filming, screenshotting, or streaming. You'll be able to get angles, set tones, and create very natural shots with this. And with the recent increase in interest in virtual photography lately, that might be more valuable than you think. And then there's those who are looking for a VR experience, but either don't have a powerful enough computer for it, or haven't decided to jump in yet. This device can replicate, to some extent, the amazing feeling you get of controlling your view and interactions in a way that feels natural and lifelike. Eye tracking, in my opinion, is leaps and bounds better than head tracking, for the simple reasons that it's more comfortable, easier to use, and a lot more natural. You can't beat this product's combination of simplicity, usefulness, and support in this market, as far as I'm aware. And then there's the price which is something to be wary of because while this is a consumer level product, it's not an entry level product and it's not mature technology. So if you wanna jump into this, you're gonna to have to pay that early adopter fee. Something to keep in mind, but if you do fall into one of those three categories I mentioned, well, I think this is worth it. Now, as a casual device, there might be some other considerations that you should take to heart before pulling the trigger. It was a bit surreal how quickly and easily this device worked for me, especially given my previous attempts at head tracking with a webcam. I didn't even do anything, and it's pretty crazy how this thing just picked up my eyes and never lost them after the first time. It always kept track of where I was looking, and for the first three minutes I just sat there and looked at different parts of the screen because it was just fun. But after that novelty wears off, I didn't expect to really be that impressed with it. But that's the thing. It just continues to remind you that it's there in very subtle ways that make the game so much better. Much like a stream deck or any other luxury that suddenly wasn't a luxury, this device can become essential to your setup and every time it works, you're reminded of that. I can't speak for the competition such as Track IR or even VR, but I know compared to those two, this blows it out of the park in ease and adaptability. You'll have tons of control and you'll have no problem getting the device to work for you. And for my giveaway winner, Streambonker, I think you're really going to enjoy this eye tracker. Make sure to send me an email at the address in the video description and we'll get that sent to you by Toby in the next week. For everybody else, if you're on the wall about it and you want to change up your gaming experience, I have no problem recommending this device to you. I'm really excited to see how this industry expands and what new advanced peripherals like this will continue to see. If you want to see this thing in action more, you can come check me out on Twitch where I'm streaming three times a week and showing off the eye tracker in different games. And if you've already got one, I'd love to see what you guys have to say about it in the comments below. Let me know. You have any problems? You enjoy it? What do you use it for? I'd like to thank you guys all for checking this review out. I hope that this was able to help you make a decision if you were on the fence or at least clear up some confusion about the device itself. Thanks for coming to check this one out, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.